Hello Sushi Life Funding. Today I want to continue with our vertex painting explorations but I will be using notes on top of that so um, yeah so the idea is basically we need to find like a good stamp in this case I will be using hands um, I download this from image bin um, so I already have this fingerprint or a hand print the other day I was actually using this a simple brush also this is also pretty good because it has the transparency something like this we can actually use for vertex painting I will be using spread chalk add-on to assist me in kind of randomly changing the color so let's get started we will be using uh, we're gonna start with a box and then just subdivide it just subdivide it five or six time let's try six time so it is quite heavy if you look as a wireframe yep that's pretty good resolutions um, so let's do SV vertex paint random oops so there's a folder random paint And then let's go into vertex paint right away and yeah you can start painting but turn on the show tools now we can have this or we can right click and pick a color so that's fine and dandy but we're gonna be using the texture right away so create a new texture you can name it and palm it's a good idea actually to name it being really organized same thing with a with a asset like this collect them and make a good gallery of it um, turn off that thing get the hand palm in bin PNG and now let's start using it okay so that's the default right it's looking pretty good it's tiled it's actually not too bad at all but you want it to be um, either stencil or random let's try stencil okay stencil is giving you that it, you can drag it using right mouse button and then it starts stencil it kind of like well this is actually really fun too um, but for now we're gonna be using random so random stamping I think I think the brush needs to be larger oh yeah it's actually a lot more random than I thought um, but anyway use the color turn on color ramp so it's activating Um, the alpha. Okay. Nothing with color ramp. We need to activate. Just like the other day, we're gonna make this white. So we have our color coming in. The color itself coming from here. So let's try pink, and then if you switch it to the other color, you have. That. okay so that's cool uh, but uh, I might need to have more detail so let's go back to object mode subdivide it one more time it's gonna be really heavy apply yep so go back to vertex mode we already have something that's pretty dirty there uh, I think shift K <laughs> shift K to will fill it um, shift K I know shift K from this menu set for text color shift K so you can start with something any color and then shift K and then you pick another color and start painting oh well, apparently apparently random give you that um, Let's check our hand palm and then 
uh, I wonder if we use, need to use 3D or need to play around with the size here. Oh, I like that. Okay. That's what I like. Maybe twice the original size. So it's more like random, but with, at least we can see the, the hand and angle turn on angle and yeah that's more like what I want kind of like Aboriginal painting if you know Australian Aboriginal indigenous art painting so it's a bit like that nice very nice all right so we have something now <clears throat> you can see what I'm doing here just using all every color of the rainbow here to paint but this is kind of manual and kind of boring right it's nothing special about it you can do it this way I mean it's not wrong or anything but you just need to go back and then you, you, you can use right click and then find a new color that's also pretty cool pretty fun but I want this to be automated so I'm gonna use spread chalk you can use animation nodes as well, but Spreadshock has a really cool node called Exact Node Mode. If you know this node, this node is actually updated on every frame. So whenever you make a frame changes, this will be run, which is pretty, pretty insane. Uh, because, um, for example, you are say you are using manual way and then changing the color of that. I just made a couple of changes if you look at under information here info that's the command that you need to run in order to change this you can run the command using blender python console um, if I change this there's a color flip and then and the color is changing again I think we need to do, run this color flip as well so I'll I'll show you what I mean so I'm gonna copy this command if I'm using Python console paste it there let's make this like red color one zero zero so it's RGB this thing changes this thing doesn't have alpha yet which is interesting I was expecting alpha channel there but yeah anyway this command we can type easily like that so we can use it here and for the color instead of typing manually we, let's try random color for example um, random number I will generate random color three size of three so if i use the stethoscope in spread chalk you can see it's generating this three number if i randomize the seed it's going to generate this three random color i can just simply plug this in into there but look at this list uh, we need to unnest it, that list first so plug this into that guy and here we can try to unpack the value i believe it's something like this okay, so that's and if you randomize yeah you can see that's changing so that that's correct but i'm all only unpacking um, a single number so this basically goes into v1 and get that nested list and go into the value index number zero one and two so that's for the rgb if i randomize now using the frame you can see it's changing let's see if it's uh, working for us not yeah seems to be working so if i run this while painting it's changing and yep it's pretty good actually it's actually working easier than I thought 
um, you can use the the X like to flip the color if you like sometimes you might need to do that but in this case not really it seems to be working you don't need to flip the color so yeah now you have random color you can use similar method for this um, if you want to have multiple like different alpha not just the hand maybe you have multiple hands variations you can use that but in this case we, you don't need that it's already pretty random and let's see what else I want to say oh the color the color is random but if you have your own color palette maybe you can have something that's a little bit more manageable like very often you don't just randomly pick a color or you don't use random color because random color is pretty ugly so you, you, you're gonna need to choose a palette of color not too much maybe just three color four color or five colors and then you reuse this um, so yeah it's storing our value and you can supposedly get this value um, in our case we might want to do that ourselves uh, let's see if we have color here so we have a color we have a way to generate color and we can unpack this this color is RGB you can turn on alpha but if I'm not wrong we can separate this like so and actually just plug this in there oh it's complaining we need to use alpha okay yeah this is probably what we want vector in r g b this one complaining maybe just plug that in there so instead of changing this we're gonna use the second one comment that out maybe something like that oh it's complaining it's not changing that because it doesn't like our value list index out of range okay where did i do wrong v2 let's try doing it this way v2 and index oh yeah it's wrong I think I did maybe the list is wrong so let's check it out so this list is looking like that this has two bracket actually three bracket the other one one two okay yeah we need to unpack it twice that's uh, might be confusing at first but once you get used to this, it's not as complicated because the value is nested inside okay, now look, look at this, we're changing that and that thing is changing pretty cool, huh? okay, so now we have actually a way to pick a color inside Spreadshop and then you can you can randomly change it over here which is pretty crazy to uh, should be complicated it's not at all so now you want to join list join right list join these three things and then pick a color or, or there's maybe there's a switch or something 
I'm not gonna do switch, just use this and then pick an item. List item. So this is the data coming in. Wait, we want to get an output. Now the data is like this nested data is nested again and nested again. Be careful with this, it gets pretty complicated otherwise. So that's more correct, I think. So three color, index zero, one, and two. So this color, right? Purple, red, and green. Purple, red, and, and green. And we can randomly pick this using integer and value of one, randomize the seed integer between 0 and 2 yep so that's three random color we can pick randomly all right so we have two method or two ways we can pipe in the color from spare chalk into predict Spain <laughs> okay I am surprised myself because I didn't plan this file save as Okay, this should be is useful. Um, SP random color. So now, if we paint everything with white, Shift K, we can use our color, or just simply update. You can see it's randomly picking our tree color. And start painting with just three color. Uh, if the color is too dark, you can always go back to sphere chalk, sphere chalk, and make more brighter color. And we can paint. Okay. Maybe this also works. It should work with a normal color paint. But I I really like the simplicity of vertex color paint. And the stamping of the hand, I need to change that. I think this probably better. It's more like, yeah. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, that's basically a quick way you can randomly stamp color using with the help of spare chalk, of course. And this thing is live, and also at the same time is pretty stable now we could go back to random and it's all it's in real time if you control space bar this is actually even faster even faster than before and it's still running spare chalk still running it's good we don't need to worry about uh, the change of environment in the script it's just simply work so it's nice i'm hoping you like this uh, if you want to bake this, of course, don't forget, you can always bake it. I will do it really, really quickly. Hopefully, this, I'm doing this correctly. You need to be in cycles. By default, render engine is EV. You want to go to cycles. And then, you go to object mode. And then this guy, maybe it's already have vertex UV map. Oh yeah, it has UV map from the box. So that's fine. You just need to go to create a new image. 1012, uh, 1024 by 1024, that's fine. And then you go under shader. And then you grab the color of the vertex. Um, it's actually from here vertex color call, C O L. Um, plug this into emission. And then you want to bake it. So you grab your image, this one, untitled. So with this guy selected and untitled selected, bake it. You need to bake it in order, if you want to use it somewhere else, you need to bake the texture map. Maybe you want to bake, use it inside game engine or 
as an AR. So that's your. Here's the contact info. Oops. All right. Um, so you got this. You can save it. So file save as hand palm diffuse. So now we have this hand palm diffuse. Um, I will grab it from the desktop. Hand palm. Plug this into principle. Delete this. And look at the result. So this is not a vertex pane. This is already something that's ready to render. You can use cycles back. I use EV. Look at it in this is real time EV. So this is nice. Look nice. Almost can't see the the scene. File export GLTF. Uh, random pane export GLTF. I think I did everything correctly. So now we can go our USD command, our Apple magic to turn this into USDZ because you want this as AR. So we got this as AR. Oh, yeah, I think this thing is pretty large. Still saving. Oh, must be pretty large. 20. Ah, oh, it's almost 30 gig. Okay. You can, of course, reduce that. If you want something even more fun, you, ask, you add a, a little bit of displacement and then use the hand palm texture to disturb this using the UV. Ah, interesting. It's. I think I just found a bug here. Oh yeah. Okay. I did something wrong. So uh, here. So let's do it again. This place. New texture. Get our hand palm. And reduce the string. So it's looking like this because we need to use UV. Suddenly we have like a procedural planet or some kind of thing. Some kind of procedural planet. Um, you probably want to... I should have shut that down. Um, you can use decimate to reduce the, the number. Reduce the poly count and then you can export it out. But that's uh, totally up to you. You can smooth it. Yeah, but at least you get a, like, um, you already have the texture that you made yourself here. Everything by hand looks nice, natural. You can even plug this into like the metallic or the roughness to get a, something that's li slightly better. Sometimes you can even plug it into the normal. Something like that. Not too much in the string. So this result will look a lot better than just simply uh, a normal sphere. Right. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, pretty much it, uh, much it. And if you have any question, suggestion, or feedback, let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.